So if you've watched my video talking about the new hardware I was going to put in my computer, you'd know that I was going to put a Ryzen 3900X in it, which is this CPU right here. So I don't know if it's going to show up too well on camera. There you go. You can see the Ryzen logo, Ryzen 3900X. And since that point, after I built the computer, if you go back and watch my videos and you see the NeoFetch thing every time I open a terminal, you'll notice it says Ryzen 3600X. And there's a very good reason for that. And there's a very good reason for why it's still in this container and why I'm throwing it around like I don't care about it. And it's because it's a dead CPU. And no, it's not dead because it was dead on arrival. If it was dead on arrival, well, I would have just RMA'd it and then I would have got a new one. No. The reason that it's not on my computer and I didn't RMA it is because I killed it when I was trying to install it. And when you do that, that voids your warranty, so you're kind of stuck there. So today I'm going to talk about how I did that and the process I went through to try to repair it. And hopefully it makes your day a little bit better or maybe it makes it worse because, I don't know, you're a person who doesn't like to see other people suffer. But I feel like there should at least be some educational value about this, about what not to do when you're building a computer. So to set the scene a little bit, I had all of my hardware set up. I had it laid out in the order I was going to build it in. I had it all sitting on my kitchen bench, which has a uh, tile floor under it, so I didn't end up, you know, shocking any of the parts. I didn't have an anti-static wrist strap on because they're just a meme and you don't really need them. Basically, just wear shoes with rubber soles or don't build on carpet. You don't really need an anti-static wrist strap. But once again, I killed a CPU, so don't take my advice for anything. So all of that was all set up. I had my tools out. I was really excited to start building because... Earlier that day, I'd recorded the video about the hardware I was going to put in, and that night I was like, okay, I'll get the computer built now, and then I can start working on my VR stuff, because the reason I bought the computer so early, because I was perfectly happy to continue using the laptop, the reason I bought it so early is because I needed it for my honors project, because what we were doing was a, I guess, a VR data visualization tool, and that wasn't going to work on my laptop, so I needed something a bit more powerful, so I brought the purchase date forward. So I was getting through everything, I had my RAM installed, and I was going to put the CPU in and the CPU cooler in before I put it into the actual case, because that's just a sensible way to do it, so you have something to grip onto. So I put the CPU into the socket, and this is where I was making the first mistake. So CPU went into the socket just fine. I used to use Intel CPUs, now I'm using AMD CPUs. Intel ones have pads on the bottom, AMD ones have pins on the bottom and the pads on the actual motherboard. Nothing went wrong here. Everything clicked into place perfectly. It just slid in, put the retention arm down, worked fine. Now, here's where I had the first problem. And the first problem was the fact that I, I didn't really look up how much thermal paste to put onto my CPU. And you can probably guess where this is going. So, I didn't realize how much the thermal paste would actually spread out. So, what I did is I put... A bit more, a bit more than like a little, a little, I guess a little dab of it. So what ended up happening was it spread out a bit too far and I was looking under the CPU and I could see that it was slightly dripping over the edge. Now depending on which thermal paste you're using, it may be electrically conductive. So I thought this was going to be a serious problem. So I looked up Arctic Silver and I couldn't really find any conclusive evidence for whether it was or whether it wasn't. So I was like, okay, I need to fix this because if I try to boot the system like this, it's probably going to die. I don't know if it's electrically conductive or not. If it is, that's going to be a serious problem because I could kill my CPU and my motherboard and everything else attached to it. So I was like, okay, I need to fix this. So I got out a Q-tip and tried to poke it in and that made it worse. So I needed something that was a bit more thin than a Q-tip. I didn't have anything around. I don't know what I could have really done to fix it, but doing that was a mistake. And this is where the mistake got even worse. So I didn't realize that Arctic Silver and a lot of other thermal paste, if you leave them on for even a minute, they basically turn to glue. And this is where it got really bad. So... <laughs> I actually feel really bad talking about this. This is making me sad. Um, so I tried to remove the CPU. And what happened was the CPU and the CPU cooler, which is a Nocta NH12S, the, you know, the, the, the Noctua cooler that everyone uses. So the Noctua cooler and the CPU came out together. 
Now my brain thought that because I have the retention arm there, it should hold the CPU in place, but I didn't really think it through that well. What the retention arm is there for is basically a hold the CPU in place. It isn't there to stop you basically pulling off the CPU cooler when it's glued to the CPU. So they came out together and this is where it got much worse. So I wasn't sure what to do at this point and I tried to separate them. And this is where disaster happened. Absolute disaster. I shouldn't have done this. This was such a bad idea. I should have started up the computer and then basically heated up the thermal paste and I'd be able to separate them just fine. But what happened when I tried to separate them is a little string of thermal paste came off and it got onto the pins of the CPU. And then I just broke down and gave up. I was like, okay, I don't know what to do at this point. If I was still like 15, back then I had a lot of anger issues, I probably would have broken something. This point I was just like, okay, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I just lost all will to do anything. I just, and just started pacing back and forth throughout the house. Like, okay, how can I fix this? Because I've got a string of thermal paste on the pins of the CPU. Is there anything I can do here? And I had a little bit of it on the motherboard. And I was like, oh, hopefully there's nothing in the CPU socket because if it's in the CPU socket, there is literally nothing I can do to save this. So after about 15 minutes of pacing back and forth, being like, is there anything I can do? I, I remembered the way you get rid of thermal paste is by using isopropyl alcohol. But because this was a couple of weeks back, during the middle of all the things that were happening, it was impossible to buy isopropyl alcohol. It was sold out everywhere. Literally everywhere it was sold out. You couldn't buy any. So I had to go onto Facebook and be like, okay, does anyone have any alcohol wipes? Just any whatsoever. And luckily for me, my stepsister had some. And she asked me, what's wrong? What do you need the alcohol wipes for? And I was like, okay, I just need them for my computer. I didn't cut myself or anything. It's fine. Can I come around and get them now? And she's like, okay, yeah, you can come around. So I went around to her place. It's only like a 10 minute drive away. Picked up the alcohol wipes. I came back and was like, okay, let's go in the order of things that I know I can save. So I started with the motherboard and there was a little bit along some of the traces on there. I managed to get that off. It looks perfectly fine. I was like, okay, hopefully this is fine. And then I went over to the CPU and I tried to look at the damage because now I've calmed down a bit. I'm like, okay, what's actually happened? And I see there's a, a little bit of a thread across it. So I get a little tool out and I try my hardest to basically take a bit of the alcohol and wipe it off and a little bit of alcohol and wipe it off and a little bit and wipe it off. But alcohol, as you would know, it evaporates very quickly. So this was a very difficult process. I managed to clean the top of the CPU just fine. That looks good as new. And I tried that for about five or six hours, I think. I was, think I was up till maybe one in the morning trying to do this. And basically every time I'd clean it off a bit, I would stick it back into the CPU socket. I would put the CPU cooler on and basically set up as a open air test bench. And I'll try to boot it and see, okay, do I get any response? And no, I tried that about 10 times. I was like, no, no response. Luckily though, there was a light on the motherboard. So I was like, okay, I haven't killed the motherboard. As long as I haven't killed the motherboard's CPU socket, I think we're good. So the next morning I went down to MSY, which is basically our local computer hardware store, which is basically the only one in this state. And I went and picked up this guy right here. Can you see the front? Yes. So this is a Ryzen 3600X. And this is what's currently in my computer. So I walked in, I was like, okay, I looked online and it said you guys have some of these CPUs in stock. Because once again, because of all the stuff that was happening and everyone working at home, all of the computer hardware was also sold out. Luckily though, they had one 3600X left in stock. So I was like, okay, I will take this. I don't care what you're charging for it. Let me just buy it. So like, okay, yeah, you can have it. Cool. Went back home, stuck it into the CPU socket, booted up the system and it worked. And it's like, oh my god, I can't believe this is actually working now. I spent so long trying to fix this last night. And all I needed was to replace the CPU and it was fine. And this was the best case of the worst case scenarios. Because what could have happened is when I put in that dead CPU, it could have killed the CPU socket. 
or it could have also shorted out my GPU, or it could have shorted out my RAM. And luckily, none of that happened. It didn't kill the CPU socket. The CPU socket worked just fine, so there wasn't any on the actual top of the pins. The only thermal paste was at the bottom where I couldn't actually reach it, and luckily where it also wasn't going to be touching the conductive part of the CPU socket. So, this was the good part, because if it had killed more, I think the the least amount of damage it could have done is if it killed the motherboard as well, which would have brought my total up to about $1,100, which I had the money for. I just didn't want to spend because no one wants to just spend $1,100 on broken hardware. So I've gone and examined it a bit more afterwards and I noticed there's still a little tiny bit of thermal paste in a couple of locations. It won't show up whatsoever on this video just because the uh, quality is way too low. But I noticed right at the bottom where it connects to the PCB, there is a tiny bit of thermal paste at the base of some of the pins. So I think that's what's still killing the CPU. I don't know though, and I'm not going to put the effort into actually fixing it. If anyone wants to buy a dead 3900X, feel free to send me a DM. Otherwise, it's going to kind of just be a memento here for what I shouldn't do when I build a computer. So if you're going to build a computer yourself, make sure that you go and firstly, look up how much thermal paste you should actually be putting on. Don't just look up like a, a text tutorial on how to do it. Go and watch a video of someone who's actually a professional do it. Not the Verge video. Any video besides that video. Go watch someone like Linus Tech Tips or any of the big tech channels who have built hundreds of computers who know exactly what they're doing. Go watch something like that and look at what you should do, what the best practices are, and also, more importantly, what you shouldn't do so you don't do the same thing that I did. Now, because I've got my YouTube channel set up as a business, this isn't the worst thing that could happen. If this was just some random Joe Schmo who killed his CPU, that would be much worse because for me, I can at least business expense this so I can get a bit of money back on my taxes. But even then, it's not going to make up for the damage that was done because, as I said, this was an $800 CPU in Australian dollars. So even though I can business expense it, it's still not going to make up for the cost. My plan going forward now is I'm probably going to keep the 3600X in my system until the uh, next generation of Ryzen CPUs come out. And then, depending on what the performance is like for those, I might go and buy the 4900X. And hopefully I don't kill that one. If I kill that one, well, I guess we're getting a part two. But I really hope I don't kill that one. Now, the 3600X has been doing me absolutely perfectly. So... I'm pr I might just keep it because I don't really need anything faster. I kind of got it so I could run VMs really well, but the 3600X absolutely destroys that. So maybe I'll keep it because back on my laptop, I wanted to do some stuff with VMs, but I had no way to record it because when I used the VM, my computer would slow down to the point where I really didn't have the ability to record it. Now though, that's way less of a problem. As for video renders, they are way quicker because Caden Live still doesn't have proper GPU rendering. Yes, I know there is a GPU rendering library. It doesn't work. And also, I'm probably going to switch from Caden Live anyway because with the latest update, I've had it crash, I think, 10 times per video I'm making, which, you know, not really the best experience to work with. So I'm probably going to switch over to Olive or maybe something else. And probably come back to Caden Live because even though Caden Live is garbage, it's still the best garbage that's available. Before I get any more rambling, I should probably end the video. So before I go, I want to thank my patrons who actually make it possible for me to be able to afford hardware like this and then kill it and then still be able to afford my rent. So a special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andrew, Montazar, Peter D, Road, Tony Don, Oculari, and Zilva. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel or anything else you want and I'll get a small kickback. Also remember to go check out my podcast, that is Tech of a T, available on Library and YouTube and any way you listen to podcasts for the audio version. Also remember to go check out this channel available on Library, BitTube, and also BitChute. Also remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. Hopefully we don't get a part two when the next generation of Rising comes out. And I'm out.